Hi everybody, happy Thursday. Welcome to Lunchtime Live. I'm Pia from Stitches and Scraps and this is episode, oh, I wanna say it's episode 98. I'm just, yep, episode 98. So for those of you who are new here, Lunchtime Live is basically like my video newsletter. So I'll tell you everything that's going on at Stitches and Scraps and then we'll finish up with a quick demo. For 2022, I've been doing a stitch of the week every week, and this week's stitch is the Knit Drop Stitch Wave, which isn't really so much a stitch as, um, like it's not a specific stitch, it's a combination of stitches. It's basically making a wave out of dropped stitches. Um, so, let's see. Oh. It says that my video is not streaming smoothly. Hopefully you guys can see it. Good morning, Mary. Let me know if you're having any issues. YouTube's giving me an error, but I don't know what's wrong. Um, but anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh yes, so this week we're gonna do the drop stitch wave stitch. Um, and I'm going to show you one more goodie that I got from H&H a few weeks ago. So let's start with what's new on the blog. And again, for those of you who are new here, if you look in the description on this video, there is a link to a blog post. And in that post is the whole list of everything I plan to talk about with links to it. So when I talk about patterns and tutorials and stuff like that, you can find them there. Just go in the description on this video. And thank you, Mary, I'm glad I seem to be okay. All right, YouTube's just giving me errors for no reason then. <laughs> Um, okay, so the first thing that's new on the blog this week is we have the newest bag pattern. This is the Shells and Cables, because I'm so creative in naming, um, the Shells and Cables Market Bag. So it's got this cool um, linked double crochet bottom and then a shell and cable lace pattern and the wooden handles and then an optional button closure. Now you don't need to do this if you don't want to, but it's basically just a long chain that's sewn on the back so that it makes a loop and then a button to go around it. So it's like a five minute thing. It's not, and it's not mandatory. It, the bag works just fine without it, but I had this cute button. Look at this button. Isn't that cute? It says, you are awesome. And somebody gave it to me at the last chain link conference I went to. I want to say Christine gave it to me, but it could have been like three other people too, and I don't remember, and that's horrible of me, but um, I, I've been waiting to use that on something, and so I just had to use it on this. Now, as far as tutorials that are going to be coming out for this, because this bag is the bag along, crochet along pattern for these two months. Um, the bag pattern just got posted. Two tutorials are gonna be coming out. Now, I told you that this pattern starts at the bottom here, with linked double crochet. I already have a full tutorial on linked double crochet on the blog, so I did not do a tutorial for this section. Hi, Tina. Um, what I've done is I've linked to the linked double crochet tutorial that I already have on the blog for this section. What I am gonna do a tutorial for, and that'll come out in a couple of weeks, is this section, this lace and cables pattern, or sorry, shells and cables pattern. It's kind of lacy and it's um, a lot easier than it looks because you're never working shells and cables at the same time. You first work a shell row, then you work a cable row. Hi Kelly, good to see you from all the way from Canada. Um, okay, the other tutorial that'll come out a couple weeks later is attaching this handle. And this, is, this one will be a really quick tutorial because it's really how to make a single crochet around the handle. So I will have those two tutorials. The the pattern, this tutorial is going to come out on the 20, what is it, the 26th, Tuesday the 26th, right after I get back from conference. This tutorial is coming out a couple weeks after that. So that is the bag along stuff. That's where we're at on our crochet along. And as always, don't forget to enter the giveaway you can go to the main, um, the materials and giveaway post. We start off each bag with a, here's the materials that you're gonna need and here's the giveaway entry form. So you'll find that the links are all there at that link in the, in the description on this video. 
um, and you can get your entries in for the giveaway. You have all the way through, let's see, what month are we in? This is July. <laughs> so this bag would be the July and August bag. So the giveaway will end near the end of August. So you've got some time, but go there and get your giveaway entries in. Oh my goodness, we have someone from Norway. Hi, good to see you. Um, so we're talking about the bag along crochet along that's going on on my, on my site this year. And that was bag number four. So get your entries in and take a look at the pattern and the tutorials will be coming out over the next few weeks. The other thing that I posted this week, we had two patterns this week. The other pattern that came out was the shell stitch um, scarf pattern that I did. And I'm trying to remember what I called it. It's, um, oh, I don't remember now. Oh, it's layered shells, layered shells, because the shells are worked into the row below or two rows below or however you want to say it. Um, but they're like not, you don't have the gaps because the shells nest inside each other. So it's a nice thick scarf. And I did something fun with combining two different weights of yarn and two different colors. Um, one of them was a solid color and the other was a self-striping color. And at one of the, the, the colors in the self-striping colorway, it matches the solid color. So you get these like stripes of colors that come and go in the pattern. I really loved that. Um, but obviously it works with any, you know, one variegated, one solid, or one self-striping, one solid. Um, try and coordinate the two colors, and they don't even have to be the same brand. The one I used weren't, but I gave some suggestions in there. And I loved the way that came out. I would have loved to show it to you right now, but it's in a box on the way to New Orleans on a truck um, because it's, I'm donating it for Knit Your Bit, which is a charity that supports veterans, and they collect... Um, scarves knit or crochet scarves so i made this one for that and it we're doing a drive for that at the show at the cgoa show in new orleans next week so that scarf's already on the truck so i can't show it to you but the pattern is up on the blog so check it out there um, and that is basically what happened last week now in our continuing um our continuing series of what I got at H&H. &H. Um, those of you who don't know, I went to a trade show called H&H. &H. Um, what was it? June, mid, late June, mid to late June. And I got so much stuff that I thought if I try to show it all to you at once, it'll just be overload. So I'm kind of showing you little bits here and there. Uh, these are all, and, and the reason I'm showing you, it's not just, hey, look what the cool stuff I got. The reason that people gave me cool stuff was because this is stuff that we think you might be interested in. I think you might be interested in and the people who gave it to me think. And some of them are new products. Some of them are products that I can get to do giveaways with or um, that I can go further with. So if you see something that interests you, let me know and I'll focus on that one first. You know, like I, I'm going to try and work with all this stuff, all the stuff that I liked out of what I got um, so that I can share it with you guys. But if there's something that particularly strikes your interest, let me know and I'll put that at the top of the list. So today's treat that I'm showing you is this lamp. Okay, so you're going, all right, it's a desk lamp here. What's the big deal? That's what I thought when I grabbed it. And it is so much cooler than just a desk lamp. Okay, so first of all, it has three different colors. There's the, let's see, they call that one white. There's a yellow one. And then there's a daylight one. Okay, so it's got the three different colors that you can cycle through. Um, it's got the gooseneck and everything. So yeah, it's still a lamp, but it's got those colors. But now let me show you the cool part about this. Hang on, I don't wanna knock off my camera. There we go, okay. So this lamp, and it's from a company called Vivilux, okay? I'm trying to get around my camera so I don't knock anything over. There we go, all right. So this lamp has, first of all, the three colors right but then it also has this wireless charger so you can totally like turn this on and oh, I don't want to show you all my notifications hang on let me clear my screen here all right I got way too many notifications in the last five minutes no less all right put this on and even with my case on it will start charging it did earlier when I did it hang on 
All right, maybe I've run the battery down too much. Oh no, I'm fully charged. <laughs> My phone's fully charged, so it's not charging. But you can turn the charger on and off. There's indicator lights showing whether it's on and running or not. Um, there's a battery indicator light, and this is a battery operated lamp. So you can, I mean, it's a like not a, it's a rechargeable battery, one of those that you charge by plugging in. So you don't have to have it plugged into anything. I can take it and move it around wherever I want. If I'm working on the couch, I can grab this lamp and just shine it right at what I need. Uh, so useful for taking pictures while I'm working on projects wherever I am because I can get that natural daylight so I don't have that shaded light from the room. Um, it's got the USB charger. It's got battery indicators. Um, let's see. And it's got whether it's charging or not. So the battery is actually still full and I've been using it for quite a while. So when I stick the, let's see, okay, there we go. I really want it to show you because it did work when I did it before. I don't know why it's not now. Oh, well, I must be doing something wrong because, or it's just that my phone is too fully charged. My phone's at, no, it should charge because it's at 94%. Anyway. It did work, I promise it did work. Um, obviously, the minute I put it on camera, it's not gonna work, right? But this is an awesome, awesome lamp. So if you're looking for a lamp that you can just pick up and move around and shine wherever you want it, and especially if you do anything with like close-up photography, this lamp is great, the lighting it provides is great. Um, and they have a bunch of other cool products. So I'll show you the brochure they gave me. They actually gave me another product, but I already gave it to my husband and um, he's stolen it and I'm never getting it back. So, and he's using it for gaming, but okay. So this one's a tiny little spotlight that you can put like on your sewing machine. Um, this one is a cool laser thing that I didn't get a lot of time to play with, but it's got red and green lasers and, and it's, it's pretty cool. Um, this one, this is the other one they gave me. And this is a three-in-one clip-on light, okay? It clips onto your glasses or your hat. So there's two of them in the pack. You can clip one on each side. This is the lamp that I just showed you, so I'm gonna put this away now. But you can clip these lights onto the sides of your glasses and they, they're flexible, so you can move them around. You clip one onto each side of your glasses and then whatever you're looking at is lit up, which is so cool, right? I don't wear glasses. You can put it on a hat or a headband or anything like that. You can basically clip them on anywhere you want to clip on a light. But my husband does wear glasses. And when we play board games, the lighting in our board game area isn't quite, it isn't great. Um, there's like a, a shadow spot. So for him, and he struggles with that, right? So for him to have those glasses with the clip on lights, he can now read all the cards and play the games and he loves it. I'm never getting it back, so I can't show them to you. <laughs> um, but he has those, and they're fantastic too. So Vivilux, this was a new company to me. And if you guys are interested in this, I can do like a review in more detail and all that stuff on the Vivilux stuff. Um, and I can talk to them about getting like a giveaway or something if, if that's something you're interested in. Let me know. Um, so that's today's installment of what Pia got at H&H. There's still a whole bunch more, so this will go on for a while. Um, and then other than that, I don't think I've got anything more to share with you this week. So I will jump right into this wave stitch pattern, um, unless there's any questions on the light or anything like that. But okay, so this pattern, and I will, I'm going to tell you guys I cheated a little bit. This pattern 100% requires blocking but I didn't want to finish off the swatch and I actually I played yarn chicken and I lost and I didn't feel like ripping out and I wanted to show all the layers. So I blocked this on my needles. Did you know you can do that? You can totally do that. Put it on your blocking board, stick pins in here, right? Slide this over so it's off of the needles, but it's on the plastic cord. Stick pins in here and then pin out the rest of it like you normally would and then you can spray it with water and stretch it and pin it and do whatever you need to and then it'll block. This pattern 100% requires blocking to get these stitches to open up the way they're supposed to. It looks nothing like this 
until you block it. So when I show you the demo of how to do it, this is what it's going to look like after you block it pretty aggressively. You want to basically go like that and then block, block it. Um, because until you do that, it doesn't, this is all kind of messy and it doesn't open up like that. But this is the drop stitch wave I'm going to show you. And there's lots of variations. So I'm just showing you one. And the one that I'm showing you uses a multiple of 10 plus six stitches. So for every repeat, it's 10 stitches. And then there's six extra for edges, basically. Um, so I have cast on here 16 stitches. The first row is knit. I went ahead and knit that. So now we're on to row number two for this pattern. And row number two is where we add our yarn overs. So the way that this works, when you make this stitch, you, before you make this stitch, you add a couple of yarn overs. And then later, you're going to drop those yarn overs, and that makes this stitch rise up higher because you've got all this extra yarn, right? And then when you make this stitch, you do three yarn overs. And when you do this stitch, you do four yarn overs. So you're increasing that distance to the stitch, right? So first we add all the yarn overs, then we're going to drop all the yarn overs. And on this row, we're adding the yarn overs. So I'm actually going to start on this repeat because it gives me two sections to work in the first row. So I'm doing a knit one just to start for my edge stitch, right? And now we're going to start playing with yarn overs. For this design, I went two yarn overs, okay, and then knit one. Then you do three yarn overs, one, two, three yarn overs, okay? Knit one. And then four, one, two, three, four. And knit one. So what we've done is we've done this, two, three, and four, okay? The, now we're at the tallest stitch. Now we're gonna come back down, three and then two, okay? So three, and then knit this stitch, and then two. There we go. And knit this stitch. Well, and actually it ends with a two, and then it says to knit six, because you're knitting this stitch, then four, then another one, so it's knit six. So one, two, three, four, and we're going to, like, hang on, there's my hand, four, five, six and now we're going to start another series of the yarn overs okay so yarn over twice knit one yarn over three times knit one yarn over four times two three four okay and knit one yarn over three times and knit one and then yarn over twice and knit that last one. There we go. So we've added a whole bunch of yarn overs on this, right? But it's not an increase. Hi, Beth, good to see you. It's not an increase because we're gonna be dropping all of those yarn overs. So when you look at the stitches, okay, as you work them, look how this stitch has, let's see if I can get the camera to focus. I cannot, okay, this stitch is attached to the stitch below it. Do you see that? Where's the focus? There we go. This stitch is attached to the stitch below it. Here, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna zoom in. There we go, okay. So this stitch here is attached to the stitch below it. This here and this here, those are yarn overs. Do you see how there's nothing underneath them? That's how we know they're yarn overs. So when we get to, come on, focus. All right, there we go. When we get to those, we're going to drop them. So as we knit, you can follow the pattern, knit one, drop two, knit one, drop three, knit one, drop four, or you can just say, I'm going to knit all the knit stitches, and then I'm going to drop all the yarn overs. There we go. Okay, so I knit because this one's connected, and obviously it's the first one. You have to knit the first one. Okay, so I knit that stitch, and then, oh look, I've got yarn overs, so just drop those two yarn overs. And then this one's a knit stitch, right? See how it's connected to the stitch below it? So I'm going to knit that stitch. 
and then I'm going to drop those three. Okay, and then I'm going to knit, there we go. I think that's tricking the autofocus of the camera. All right, then I'm gonna knit that stitch and then drop those four. Remember, we went two, three, four, three, two, right? Look at what a mess this looks like, right? Knit that stitch, drop these three that aren't connected to anything. Knit that stitch. Oh no, I'm knitting with my tail. Ha! Huh? All right, so I made a mistake. I'm knitting with my tail. I'm gonna undo what I did very carefully. I've already dropped those stitches, right? So these are just very long stitches now. So I'm gonna come back here and there we go. I knit them with the right yarn this time. And just ignore me, I'm correcting what I did here, knit. These very long stitches that are here, and you can see how it goes, they get longer and longer as I get up to four, and then it starts to go back down again. Okay, so there's the stitches. Um, and then these are two more yarn overs, right? So drop those two, and then knit this stitch. And now we're gonna knit several stitches till we get to the next section of yarn overs. So knit, 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 and then look, yarn overs. Do you see the difference when you get there? Like you can tell there's, you're putting your needle into a gap. And so you don't wanna do that, you just drop the yarn overs. So that was two, so the next one's going to have three, and then the next one's going to have four, one, two, three, four, and then three, and then two, and then we knit the last stitch. And that looks like a huge mess, doesn't it? Remember I told you it wasn't going to look like anything till we blocked it? You can sort of see the pattern if you start to pull on the bottom of these stitches, okay? You can see we've got one section of wave here, one section of wave here, and some plain stitches in between. So, okay, I'm setting the zoom and then I'm leaving it alone. All right, there we go. So that is two waves. Now we're going to put another wave in the middle to even this out because see, these got really long and this is really short. So now I need to put the long ones here, right? And it's gonna overlap these slightly. So we're going to knit six to start. Oh, sorry, I'm jumping right into the next pattern repeat. I did this when I did the swatch too. After we do the dropping of the stitches, there are two rows of plain knit. So the pattern goes, row one is knit, row two is put in all the yarn overs, right? Row three is drop all the yarn overs, and then row four is knit, and then you start the, the staggered cycle again with row five being knit, row six you pick up yarn overs, row seven you drop the yarn overs, and row eight you knit. So there's it's an eight row repeat with like, there's four rows that put these two in there, and then there's four rows that put the center one in there. So I'm gonna knit two rows real quick here. So this is row four, and now we're starting the second half of the repeat with row five, which is knit, just like row one was. So row five is knit. Hot over here. Ah, there we go. Knit. I know, it's boring to watch the plain knitting rows, right? I'll go as fast as I can. This is a great time to count your stitches and make sure that you still have the same number you started with. I started with 16 and I still have 16. If you don't, you may have dropped too many stitches or you may have forgotten to drop some of the yarn overs if you have too many left over. So you wanna make sure. Now you can see those waves, right? Now we're gonna put one in the center to even out the height of the, this row, okay? So for this, we're going to first knit the first six stitches. And 
And now let's put in another wave. So yarn over, okay? Sorry, yarn over twice. We're doing two, three, four, three, two. Okay, so knit one. Now yarn over three times. Knit one. Yarn over four times. Knit one. Now go back down the ladder, okay? So we had four, now we've got three. Knit one. And then we go down to two and knit one. All right, so we went up two, three, four, and then back down three and two, okay? And then I've got five stitches left because you knit the last six, but I already knit that one, right? So I'm knitting two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so this time I just have the one wave, just the one bunch of extra yarn overs in there. So let's switch over to dropping the yarn overs. Now I'm on row seven, okay? So on row seven, I knit the ones that are knit that have something connected to them, which is the first six, okay? And then I come to yarn overs, see that? So now I drop those two yarn overs and I knit the next stitch. Then I've got three yarn overs. Drop the three yarn overs and knit the next stitch. Then I drop the four yarn overs and I knit the next stitch. Now I'm back to three, so drop three, knit, drop two, and knit the last six. So you pick them up and then you drop them. And it's really that simple. Um, and then the last row, this this was row, oh, let's see, five was knit, six was pick up. This is row seven. Um, so the last row, row eight, you just knit all the stitches. And after I do row eight, then I'll show you what it looks like when I stretch it out. It's a good, good row to count on. Three, four, five, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Okay, so that is the eight row repeat. And you can see here we've got um, stretching it, right? and stretch it pretty aggressively. If you've got a delicate yarn, obviously not as aggressively as this, but um, you can see here that I've got one wave here, one wave here, and then one wave in the center. And now my, my piece is a little bit more rectangular, right? Because everything evens out. Now, when you look at it all scrunched up, when you're knitting it, you're gonna be like, that looks horrible. Um, everything's all scrunched up. You can't really make anything out. But then as soon as you block it, you get, you get this. And that is such a pretty stitch, right? When you block it, everything relaxes. These stitches, when you block it, you want to do this. You want to push the stitch part of the stitch up and pull these drop stitches open, right? So you pin it and then you kind of go like this on all of the, the loops and even things out. Okay, you want to make sure you keep your tension even on your yarn overs, otherwise you'll get loops that are a little too big um, and that they'll bubble a little bit, but that's okay too, right? This, this has so much drape, it's great for like a scarf pattern or anything that you want like loose and flowy. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about modifications on this, because I told you this isn't a specific stitch, what I'm showing you is more of a technique, right? To make the wave, we've talked about this, to make it go wavy like this, we went two, three, four, three, two, right? You can do any pattern to shape this wave any way you like, changing up the yarn overs. So you could go two, two, three, three, four, four, three, three, two, two. You could go one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. You know, you wanna go up and you wanna go back down. The more stitches you put in it, like if you go one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, one, that's a lot more stitches, the wider your wave will get. The more, the maximum yarn overs you have, or the more yarn overs you have, the taller your stitches will get. 
you will have to adjust stitch counts around it so it might take some playing this has two three four three two this has five sets of yarn overs so if you go around it there's six stitches right okay and if you just take the ones in between there's four stitches okay so here's my five yarn overs if i count all the stitches outside through and outside right there's six one two three four five six if i just count the ones inside there's one two three four so to find your multiple add those two numbers together one two three four five six seven eight nine ten my multiple is ten okay plus the larger of the numbers so my multiple is ten plus one two three four five six so that's a neat trick to figure it out based on how many yarn over stitches you're going to have um, so like if I had two more yarn over type stitches now I've got seven um, seven sets of yarn overs then I so that would be like if I went one two three four three two one instead of two three four three two so that adds the two extra yarn overs that adds an extra stitch on each side so now instead of six and four making ten now I've got eight and if I'm not mistaken yes eight and six making 14 my multiple then becomes 14 plus eight so that's how you can figure out your multiples if you modify the number of stitches but if you don't want to change the multiple you can modify the height of the stitches you can go one two three two one you can go three four five four three whatever you want to do to get taller or smaller waves and that is the knit wave stitch so I hope you guys enjoyed that um, and I will okay so to, if there's any questions on that obviously let me know I want to tell you what's going on for me next week I am leaving on Sunday to go to New Orleans the conference starts on Wednesday I'm not officially there until Tuesday if anybody wants anything from me I'm kind of in hiding on Sunday and Monday I'm going to be um, taking some time just to relax and just have some fun in New Orleans you know just a couple of days before conference craziness starts um, and then the conference is Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday and I fly back home Tuesday's like my prep day but conference is Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday and I fly back home on Sunday so I will be gone from this Sunday the 17th I want to say until Monday which I think is the 25th <laughs> um, so if you put in orders on my website I'm gonna have to put a banner up if you put in orders it's good you can put in orders it's gonna be a, a week delayed in getting your yarn um, I will not have any patterns or anything going on the blog next week and I will not have a lunchtime live next week so I'm basically gone for a week but I will be posting on social media thank you Beth I'm gonna have so much fun it's gonna be so nice to see everybody um, I'm going to be posting on social media throughout the event on the CGOA page and possibly on my page so check out you know the CGOA Facebook page I have a couple of things planned that we haven't really announced because it's kind of loosey-goosey like if I have a moment I'll wander around and show you this you know um just kind of like live stream when i have some spare time so nothing planned um but that'll you know check that out on the cgoa page on my page and then when i get back so the so next week just doesn't exist after next week um when i get back we'll do the tutorial for the bag for that lace stitch and i've got uh what else oh i've got the um next week after I get back so the 28th that Thursday two Thursdays from now um, our stitch of the week will be the crochet wave stitch um, I'm trying to do them in pairs even though they're not necessarily the same concept of stitch but the crochet wave stitch will be next so that is that is it that's everything I have thank you so much for joining me you guys I hope you have a great weekend I hope I'll see some of you in New Orleans and if not have a wonderful week and i will be back um on the 25th bye